What's up folks, Kerr the Artist here, and welcome back to another Ben 10 Breakdown. During the last full breakdown, Kellen and I joked about Ben having amnesia being the reason that his character arc is always reset. He's just an amnesiac at this point. <laughs> Something happened to him to make him forget, like, the events of Secrets of the Omnitrix <laughs> and many things since then. I do love this episode though, but like, it's, it's built on something that he should already get like a dozen times over by now. Throughout all four shows, Ben constantly has to relearn the same lessons over and over again, making him frustrating to enjoy as a whole for those that stick with the show all the way through. This problem isn't exclusive to any iteration of the show, as all of them do it at some point. Ben has to learn about humility, that he can't rely on the Omnitrix, that teamwork is important, that he shouldn't be selfish, etc. And while this is another episode along those lines, it sparks an interesting discussion on how something like this can work. Maybe Ben is just a bad learner, and when he does learn his lessons, it's hard to have them stick because of his stubbornness. Maybe when Hypnotic was projecting fame into Ben's head, it's cause that's what his his child self saw, and he tried to get him with the same thing twice. But as a teenager, Ben is able to overcome his adolescent temptations on his own. Or maybe the Celestial Sapiens are always screwing with him behind the scenes similar to Azmuth. And before you ask, well why would the Celestial Sapiens care enough to reset Ben's character arc, well why would they care to reset anything? Like it's canonically confirmed the art style and voice actor changes are due to them, so like wh wh where does that come from? I'm just saying, sometimes the Celestial Sapiens just be fucking around. Or maybe he really does have genuine memories problems. Like my theory where constantly switching his intelligence based on his different alien forms causes his human form to just start deteriorating mentally. Of course, all of these are just headcanons, as the real reason is that the show goes on for so long, sometimes they have to have Ben relearn his previous morals so the audience can continue to re-familiarize themselves with him. But in universe, it just kind of makes Ben seem like a shitty person, who constantly needs to be reminded that yes, other people do have value. This episode also expands the malware arc further and starts to link the flashbacks and present day conflicts even more. So aside from Ben's character arc, this should be a very fun episode to break down. But if this is your first breakdown and you're curious about how my rating system works, there's a detailed description down below along with a link to all my previous episodes, but by all means watch this video first, I'm sure you'll still enjoy it. Also if you haven't noticed, I got 5YL Ben's fit, Omnitrix and everything. So this Omnitrix was actually made by Stan Hanrahan, he created this for our live action collaboration video and sent me one just for me. He also sent me the original prototype which doesn't seem to fit me, but it's still cool to have, along with an interchangeable core, so thank you so much, Stan. I also got his jacket made by Kikuharu Nakamura. It's thick and baggy, just like when I draw it, but it also has all of the signature designs and details. I love it. Looks really good. And on the note of 5YL, episodes 4, 5, and 6 are coming out before the end of the month. I'll be announcing release dates on our social medias very soon, so make sure to follow us down below. But until then, you may notice our uploads slow down a little bit. I'm also not going to be streaming for the next couple of weeks. Let's go hear a word from our sponsor. Tune out the sounds of the world around you with the Raycon's everyday earbud. With these, you can easily see how Raycon made a name for themselves in premium audio. They provide stellar sounds at a great price, earning themselves tens of thousands of five-star reviews. And with the holidays right around the corner, these will make the perfect gift for a loved one or for yourself. Recon is offering limited time bundles on some of their best selling products where you can grab my personal favorite, the Everyday Audio Kit. With this kit, I like to listen to my favorite podcasts while doing the simple things in life like eating, watching TV, or plotting world domination. This holiday season, get premium audio and power tech at a great price and save even more while doing it. Go to buyraycon.com slash tank to get 15% off site-wide, or you can click the link in the description below. On December 22nd, 2012, David McDermott gave us Malfactor. At a charity event, Ben is attacked by Kyber and Zed, the latter showing off a new alien predator, Hypnotic. This leads to a flashback that shows the origins of Malware's second form, as Malware finally confronts Ben in the present day face to face. The old Bellwood Days Festival is the first personal appearance I've done in months! This flower drawn on the flyer already looks ten times better than that flower Eunice gave Ben. I like the idea that Bellwood is named after a wooden bell too, but his first personal 
appearance in months. Once again, emphasizes the completely fucked timeline of Ultimate Alien and Omniverse taking place in one year. But when was the last one? We had him doing the signing at Mr. Smoothie and Andrea's fault. Then all that stuff in Hero Time. Not sure if this counts, but there's JT and Cash's web show. Yeah, I guess it really has been a bit. Yeah, he's been mobbed down by fans all throughout UA. But as for like making like a scheduled public appearance to endorse something, it has been a few episodes. In fact, this is the first time in Omniverse we're really seeing him do it. I can't find my name on here anywhere. It's a little disappointing they're not using the peer set just because it would make sense. But it also gives us a chance to see more of Bellwood. Although this does look very similar to the peer. Even this ride right here is very peer-like. It's like that thing ship took over. It does not seem right for a plumber to seek personal celebrity. If people want to shower me with attention, who am I to stand in their way? I mean, that logic works. Ben Tennyson! Oh my, who is that? Oh, Tara Strong. Should have seen that coming. Natalie Alvarez, Deputy Director, Bellwood Parks and Recreation. Pretty good voice work there, though. I don't think I would have been able to tell that was Tara. Sidekick could join us here today. Well, maybe a little bit. I wanted to get Kangaroo Commando. Hey, throwback. I guess his PR team really helped him bounce back after that whole Wild Vine fight. There it is. Hey, it's the Mr. Smoothie vendor. Well, in this economy, you definitely do need two jobs. The Laplanders who founded Bellwood in 1638. Oh, wow. Can't get away with saying that anymore. There is an increasing amount of terms and vocabulary that is now being more publicly understood as offensive, so it's a, t it's a tough line to walk. But it's always good to stay informed because you never know. Hand carved from solid walnut. Solid walnut? Like, like the nut? Oh, okay, just the wood. Yeah, I get it now. Nice throwback to the classic series logo. There's gotta be some kind of mistake, lady. Save the world like a billion times? This is a very grandiose dunk tank, though. I mean, he can see this as disrespectful, and that's valid, but, like, the fact that just a simple dunk tank has given all of this attention, dual speakers, a gigantic sign, a stage of all things, this is some top-tier treatment, dude, and it's just some water. I would be honored. All proceeds go to charity. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it is for charity. Rook's been waiting to do that. Oh, now he's running in this booth. He's got a name, right? Oh, yeah, Julius. Honestly, perfect name. Oh, and it appears that this is gonna be the only episode he talks, and he'll be voiced by Yuri Lowenthal, so listen out for that. When I put this online, it'll be December 9, Ben. Do a big chill! Mm -hmm. Wait, no. Brainstorm! That's Bumper Robinson, and I'm happy that the names of his aliens are becoming just as popular as him. Such a lovely shot of the Omnitrix. <laughs> Soak it up, folks. This is one of Brainstorm's only two appearances, unless you count his brief cameo in the finale. And this is a very solid transformation. Look at the face shape push into Brainstorm and the mass bubbling underneath, flexing into the Brainstorm's crab shape. It's kind of like, uh, you know how when crustaceans shed their skin, you can see they're this big mushy thing and, and they're pushing themselves out of it. This kind of reminds me of Brainstorm's pure crustacean form growing inside of Ben's skin and then sliding it on like a suit. And it looks so happy too. Great smile, Brainstorm. Oh, sure. Now dumb, excuse me, what I want. Y'all know D is my boy, but I do prefer Corey's brainstorm a lot more, and I like how it sounds like his thoughts are psychically projected, and I also like how he's written too. Like, you get a lot more of that in his other appearance, but it's less dictionary vomit and more actual, to the point, intellectual speak. Now I'm afraid I must insist you position your posterior firmly back inside of the Omnitrix. Their advantage, superior numbers. My advantage. Superior intelligence! Fuck him up. God damn it. Out of my way, dweebs! Oh, D's back. I heard you stole my voice roll, Cory. If you listen closely, he was timing out already, and he just so happened to time out in the water. Stinkfly! Hell yeah, rack him up again. <laughs> Another great transformation. Look at that. Pierces out of his chest. Very reminiscent of his classic series transformation. That's that's fantastic. And the force of his head protruding slams his eyes backwards a little bit. <laughs> Looks like the top of his animation frame was put too low, though. Yeah. Wild Monkey! Keep going. Fire Monkey! Yo, this kid is me. Humongousaur! <laughs> You know, this mid-frame gets memed on quite a lot, but this is still a really great transformation for Ben. Like, I love that it looks gross and weird and stuff, because, you know, that's that's what the transition would probably be like. And damn, this stage can support the weight of Humongousaur, too. Whoever built this, you know, bravo. Presentation and sturdy? Gotta be using that walnut wood. 
That's a funny little gag, too. I bet you're not even the real humongous sword. Probably just some loser in a cheap costume. Dude, you just saw me transform. That's such a great exchange, too. I love how we're, like, almost four minutes into the episode, and so far it's just a bunch of people fucking with Ben. And we get to see a lot of aliens with some great animation. I'd love just a, a nice little casual episode like this. Just really see, like, center an entire episode about the world reacting to Ben's fame and his position in society now. It, it's been focused on pretty heavily, but it's always attached to some grand typical Ben 10 plot and those all work but I would love an episode that's just this like just Ben's life as a famous superhero lame go Rook I was purchasing more tickets seriously not cool man <laughs> I feel like it's always Bug Lizard. Five out of the eight appearances Zed has shown up so far, she's used Bug Lizard. Maybe this is like the easiest one to animate, although with all these patterns and stuff, you'd think otherwise. Or people just love Bug Lizard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at it go. That's neat. Yo, I thought that was the kid for a second. Oh wow, look how gigantic these balls are compared to them. Hey, ugly! Oh no, the bell. No yeah, I know. Time to be the hero, Ben. I have to save that kid, Humongosaur. This one too, just non-stop fantastic transformations. Look how the fire like explodes out of his hair. Almost like a mini firework display. Or like when you cover something in gasoline and you first light it and it's like <laughs> Love that little fire burst right there to help propel his front flips. It's a really good thing he didn't burn it. Oh. Oh man. So I'm definitely looking way too into this, but like when Heat Blast wipes his forehead, do you think he's genuinely wiping sweat away? Or is that just like habit from Ben being human a lot? Can't really fight fire with fire. This is one of the rare times where they have Heat Blast get covered by shadow and they remember to make sure his flames not also get darker. I know Classic and Alien Force definitely did that. And I could have sworn Omniverse did it once, maybe in a way later episode, but not here. Although granted, it is doing it to his body. And only the head flame is still active, but hey, better than nothing. <laughs> Look at this. Rook prepares his punch before jumping off to use the momentum of the fall to give it more force behind it to smack Kyber. Granted, it's countered, but that's good thinking there, Rook. <laughs> Oof. Oh, damn. Let's go, Kyber. Give me some hype, finally. No one gives a drop on Kyber. There is a first time for everything. Damn, Rook is awesome. <laughs> Two seasons in and we're still with the habit that Ben's just coincidentally turning into the aliens that Zed has predators for. I know why they do it, and I've talked about this a few times in previous breakdowns, but like, man. It's like, when Zed shows up, you know exactly which aliens Ben's going to become, and it's just gonna be a bunch of patty cake back and forth. Who's it gonna be? Slamworm? Couldn't be Slamworm, right? Oh wow, who would have saw that come? Slamworm? Bet you're you're shocked? Ben's like, yet again, I've fallen for the same trick. Fifteen episodes in a row. They just keep doing it to me. God, it's so hard to be me. Make him stop whistling commands at the dog! Although at least now he knows how Kyber switches the forms. Kyber is not whistling. Except now it doesn't matter, apparently. This is a very good shot that is probably a lot trickier than you might think. Having the background and foreground be in perfect sync with each other when it comes to the direction and movement he's being thrown around as. Like if they put a GoPro inside of Slamworm's mouth right here. Excellent editing right there. Hey, no slacking on the superhero! But what about an alien you've never seen before? Yeah, let's, let's go, Ben. Now we're thinking. Very epic reveal shot right there. Now granted, this still doesn't work, because unknowns to Ben, Zed does have Big Chill's Predator as well, but I'm at least impressed that after all this time, Ben's finally starting to choose aliens that he thinks Zed might not have a Predator for. And with about 40-ish aliens right now that he currently has, Sans mistransforming, he could keep trying different ones, because you never know. I'm sure a fair amount of them that he doesn't have Predators for can easily take on the main ones, like Slamworm's very similar to the creatures Ben fought with Rhiny. So Maybe, let's see, Echo Echo versus Slamworm. How would that go? Or could Chromastone fight against Terrarantula's uh, electrical net attack? But this is actually my favorite Predator. I love the design. I love this effect right here. I love the concept of the hypnosis. It's... This one's the best one, and I'm happy that we were able to match its animation pretty well in the and beyond episode we did on Big Chill's Homeworld. Go check that out if you haven't already. It's it's one of our best. 
still not a fan of Omniverse Big Chill. Never thought I'd see one of you guys again. That's kind of cute though, hiding his head with his little hood flaps. <laughs> Now, here we're about to get, like, a whole mini-episode in this episode. When I think of this episode, it's pretty much primarily dominated by the flashback that's about to happen. I always feel like this is most of the episode, and it's just book-ended by Ben being at the fair with Rook, but we're over eight minutes into the episode, reaching the halfway point, and only just now are we finally flashing back to this, so. Kind of feels like we're getting, we're getting two in one right now. Oh, that's weird. In the coming shot, we get the colors of the OG Rust Bucket, but once we flip around, it's now the Rust Bucket too. Pretty sure these are the exact same model, just with different color palettes, and I'm still under the impression this is the very same Rust Bucket model all the way back from Classic. Maybe modified a little bit, but like, these wheels, they don't lie. Mount Rushmore again. Forever King stole the sub-energy and, and you turned into Upchuck and belched away half a mountain. They sit there recapping versus the negative 10 so directly. They're like, yeah, if you didn't see that episode, we don't care. It's canon. Is that what happened? I thought you looked at it. Now this happened in Classic 2, right? I kind of remember that a little bit. Uh, maybe not. They were entering using a button, at least in secrets. Nope, not seeing anything there. I, I could have sworn they used like this number pad thing in Classic, right? Could be wrong, but... It fits. Mount Rushmore is a working plumber base now. This is a great way to tie the transition between Classics plumbers being like the Men in Black and UAF making them full-on space cops with galaxies under their jurisdiction, but this still kind of contradicts early Alien Force where like, for instance, Magister Galil. There's a reason we shut down plumber operations on Earth five years ago. Without an imminent threat, I can't allow plumbers' resources to be wasted here. As of now, you're the only law in the quadrant. Alien Force was still figuring out what the plumbers truly were back then, so you're just gonna have to deal with the inconsistency. But this right here, seeing like ever since the events of the end of Classic leading into what we see in Omniverse, this is a good transition. Still haven't told us what we're doing here, Grandpa. You, it wouldn't be a surprise. And they got the OG plumber suits too. And look, little flashback Jerry, he doesn't have his mustache. And A, almost every single person in the shot is female. I really wish they didn't make the skirts though. I get they were probably still trying to fit into like that 50s, 60s sci-fi attire. The stereotypes aside, it just doesn't look good. Like these pockets slapped right onto the skirt, it's just... Ugh. Whoa. I'm strictly retired. Bullshit. Magister Tennyson, sir. Magister. Uh, this way. Still keeping secrets. Classic Max. The frame that Ben's head is going to lead into pops in a bit early, and you can see him fold into that. It's cool to see these things again, too. They are a slightly different design, but, you know, they're they're probably the exact same device. This is just Omniverse's version. Because Max doesn't even introduce it to them. He's like, you know what these are. There it is, kids. The plumbers confiscated this one from some interstellar smugglers. We also talked a little bit about that in and beyond as well. It's being kept here until it can be moved off-world to a wildlife preserve. Oh, that's nice. Plumbers saving the universe even in non-violent ways. This might be your last chance to see one. They're almost extinct. It's really nice that Max wanted to bring his kids to see this too. You rarely see him contact them just for fun anymore. It's always plumber related. And granted, this is the flashback, so chronologically it's still not current, but you know, for us as the audience, it's just nice seeing Max try to bond with his grandkids more. <laughs> There's that gif. Hunt by hypnotizing their prey. Whatever you want most, that's what you see? So cool. What would you guys see if this thing ever struck you? Let's see who's brave enough to be honest down in the comments below. I was the most famous superhero in the universe. That was awesome. So Ben got what he wanted. Although we'll later see it's not enough for him. He wants to be even more famous. So it's just this never ending cascade of wanting to accomplish the same goal, but bigger and bigger and bigger. Once the whole universe knows who you are, Ben, what then? I mean, they kind of already do. So just freaking there you go, man. You're, you're good. There were people cheering wherever I went. Psycholeopterans usually hunt creatures that can phase through solid matter. Ectoneurites. Hey, look at him learning the alien vocabulary. Hell yeah. Close. They're called Necrophrygians. And they Red alert. Oh, that's a really cool thing to do. I love seeing future lore implemented in, in classic, even though this is Omniverse. You know, o Omniverse, sometimes when it hits just right, it really does feel like classic, or at least gives me the same type of satisfaction as like hearing Grandpa Max explain to Kid Ben who Big Chill is. That's, that's just, that's neat. Red alert means hero time. 
Time to miss every shot again. What do you think it is? Big trouble if Grandpa Max catches us. Although this is something I feel like Omniverse gets wrong. This is the second time we've seen that Grandpa Max wouldn't want Ben to jump in and save the day. And yeah, he's not as capable and responsible as his teenage self. And in early classic series, he was a little bit more restrictive. But by the end of classic, Max was very confident in Ben's skills. And Gwen too, but we're talking about Ben here. Where both this scenario and the previous scenario, I don't think Max should be upset if he was gonna jump in and try to help. Like... This just seems like they're babying Ben a bit too much. It's malware. Malware. <laughs> I love that the guns become back to back when he absorbs them. Although these center points are colored differently. <laughs> oh, except when he puts them down, then they match again. Don't! Grandpa Max said it's hero time. Hey, two hero times, one episode. <laughs> Still a great transformation. I love when you see the shape of the alien form in Ben before the color changes. Really good stuff. It's kind of like a like a whip crack sort of thing. Or like flicking a rubber band with his head popping out. Look at that. Mm, nice. Forces Nebula! Gwen's still not super used to making her shield, so she needs a spell to aid their creation. And this one comes in pretty differently than her just regular mana constructs too. Wow, this is a very weirdly drawn head though. Still not a fan of the flat lines on the top and bottom of his helmet. That's it, Ben! Keep him busy! It's hard to hear it over all the action, and I won't be able to play it because of copyright, but this scene has a really good soundtrack that, so far, I only recognize for this scene. Also, wow, I forgot how giant this, uh, what was this, the tachyon gun is? Yeah, this thing is friggin' huge. Oh my god. <laughs> I love that all of these different orbs have different patterns on them, but some of them kind of remind me of the charms of Bazell. Woohoo! Another victory for Team Tennyson! Hey, look at that. The reboot didn't come up with the term Team Tennyson. Also nice to see them just positively enforce each other. Tachyon Cannon is a weapon of last resort. It took malware apart on a subcellular level. You'd like to think that, wouldn't you? That's a really cool effect for his voice since it's all disassembled, but really makes you wonder where it's emitting from. Oh, man. It's mine now. And now we finally get the origin of Malware's next form with another really good transformation. Shoot it. He's still going. Human DNA has less than 1% variation. Max is just full of fun facts this episode. You could wipe out every human within 100 miles. Bro, shut up. Guess who? You know what, at this point, I, I think I am getting a little sick of seeing feedback all the time. How do you like a little feedback? I, I'm all set. Although this is cool how since Malware doesn't have a hand to clash with to mirror these hands grasping together, he's shooting the beam and feedback's taking it with one hand. He's still cool. Also, this should be white. There's Kyber. But I've gotten what I came for. I love the sound effect of his laser. Aw, he said he got what he came for. Kyber's been collecting alien predator DNA for the last five years. I wonder if Wild Mutt would be good against him since he doesn't have eyes? Or like, since Heat Blast doesn't have eyeballs, would that work? Echo Echo could be good too, leave one as bait and have the others surround him. I'm not I'm not saying this to fault the episode, like, oh, it's bad writing that they didn't try all these different things and Ben doesn't just win like that, but it does make you wonder, like, what would these matchups be like? It would be very cool to see more of Ben's other aliens go against the different predators. Billion's Tower, foreshadowing. Y'all probably saw this coming. I hated this scene originally. Ben, again, has to relearn humility. I think a more interesting way to look at it, at least this is just me trying to cope with the fact that this keeps happening, is while Ben keeps relearning the same lessons, he has a really hard time sticking to those habits. Like nobody out there learns anything once and then that's it. Of course they need repetition. So I, I feel like if they were gonna have Ben keep relearning the same lessons, they should have made that be his character arc and have folks acknowledge that he keeps 
keeps resetting himself or something. Or maybe even what I said earlier is that once Ben meets his goals, he just sets a more extreme version of his previous goals. That's a trap I find myself falling into as well. And what I've learned is you always need to take a step back and just appreciate where you are and the things you've accomplished and the hardships you've had to endure to get where you are. And I think that's something Ben struggles with is accepting that he really does have the world exactly where he wants it to be right now. And it's not about learning that fame isn't important or he shouldn't rely on the Omnitrix or he should take things seriously. All those, those things that everybody complains about. It should be about Ben learning to appreciate what he has. And I know that's not what this episode's about. I don't want to project my own interpretation on that and be like, so it's fine. Because like in the episode, it, it really is just Ben learning the same lesson again. I'm just saying at this point, if they're going to keep doing it, there's other ways to attack it and make it feel refreshing without just gonk, Ben forgot. Oh, fame isn't great. I have to accept that now. Again. Yeah! I love you all, not as much as you love me. Like, for fuck's sake, dude. No, this isn't what it's about. Although, granted, he does come to this realization on his own. He doesn't have to have somebody else teach him the lesson, so maybe it is just, like, solidifying the repetition. Maybe you could defend the episode in that regard. Because this is kind of him just being like, nope, I've been through this. But it just, it doesn't feel that way. It really feels like we're just doing this again, and it's exhausting. Being a hero isn't about fame. It's about putting other people before yourself. Like, he already does that. Like, that's who he is. He's making this statement as if this is new. Maybe it's supposed to tie into the beginning scene with like the fact he wasn't appreciating the opportunity to be dunked at the fair for charity. I don't know. I, I'm seeing the threads there, but I keep saying it, man. I'm just tired of seeing Ben go through the same character arc on repeat. It's about making a difference. And here we get another instance of the Omnitrix timing out, but he decides to slap it anyway. In midair for whatever reason. <laughs> just walks off like a 25 foot drop from the air. Maybe you are just wasting my time. It was all a, a ruse. Go Rook. Yeah. This is all just a diversion. He's after something else here. It is my truck. Love this shot though of Heat Blast flying in and floating into Ben almost. And the way these magma rocks are drawn too. Every one of these frames could be like a comic book panel. This is all really great stuff. Yeah, every frame. Solid. Run that back one more time for me. Guess who? Although now it's on his other hand, so he can swap the hands. It's not possible. Stay away from me. I'm warning you! We rarely ever see Ben get scared of his enemies. In fact, usually it's just frustration or like uncaring snarkiness because he's just, he's seen it all. I mean, the freaking universe blew up and he just didn't give a shit, but malware? Malware cuts deep with him. You're warning me, I'm warning you. To stop malware once and for all. Not this time. <laughs> Absorb one of these cars and make it fly. Goddamn malware. <laughs> It's crazy how, like, in this kind of shot, these angles are so perfect and precise, you can still tell this road is slightly elevated upwards, like San Francisco. That is some impressive line work. That is a huge leap for Humongousaur. Very small thing, but these roads have like little steps in between and this bus drives up it like it's a smooth surface. And like, yeah, you're, you're not gonna waste time animating the bus do that. Like, fuck that, I wouldn't do that. But it's just something neat to notice if you can see it. There, oh, 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 it did it. Look at that, beautiful stuff, bravo. <laughs> Your choice, hero. Like how this is a legitimate way for malware to evade Ben by putting somebody else in danger. It's better than just like, oh, he caught away and they watch him run off like they've done a couple of times. You kids okay? And he checks on the kids too. That's wonderful. And nice detail with the skid marks on the road. What did he take? Difficult to determine. Wow, we don't really see back here. It's a nice little look into Rook's proto truck. Hey. Um, I was being kind of a jerk to you before, but you saved my life. I like how it's the kid apologizing to Ben and not Ben has to apologize to the kid. I know Ben didn't even do anything, but, but these type of stories are usually written where it's like, oh, Ben has to accept that he's there for the kids and he's gotta let them have their fun. But here, the kid acknowledges he was in the wrong and he apologizes to him. Thanks. Don't mention it. What I do. And Ben's earnest with his response too. He's not just like, yeah, you should be. Wow, three times Humongousaur in one episode. I can't thank you enough. Now, if you'll excuse me. All right, folks, step right up. It's Rook. 
Huh, I must have missed it when Julius talked. When, when does Julius talk in this episode? Maybe it's just screaming, and running away or something? Whatever. I gotta say, this one felt pretty solid. Still didn't end up getting the best score and I'll go through it, but I always felt like this was a pretty forgettable episode. And after watching it again, I, I still see why, but you know, it, it's got some good stuff going for it. I'm gonna give the plot a three. The biggest thing that scorns me from this episode is the Ben relearning his lessons yet again sort of thing, but it didn't take up as much uh, screen time as I remembered. That's just the most memorable part for me because it, it was frustrating. But I like that we got some more malware backstory. I like seeing Ben interact with his community. I like the new Predator. I liked all the aliens we got. It was just pretty enjoyable. It just, it doesn't feel super special. It does feel a little choppy sometimes with the pacing. Like the first eight minutes is just more a Kyber and Zed. And at this point, it just feels boring. We know what's going to happen. We know that they're just stalemating each other the whole time. We got so much of it in season one. We don't need to keep doing it in season two. But once we flash back, that's when the episode really picks up. And then we get to the present and Ben finally gets to come face to face with malware, that's what I'm here for. And I really did enjoy all the dunk tank stuff. Characterization will get another three. It's all very standard, very in character. I'm still keeping it from the four or five because the moral repetition, it does bring it down. It's just, it's ridiculous at this point. Aside from that, there's also not really many standout character moments in this episode either. So I think a three is pretty fair. Great animation and a lot going on. Y'all already know how I feel about it from watching the breakdown. It's just really good stuff. Importance, I kind of struggled with because the only real important thing is that that Ben's now aware of malware. And I guess you get to see where his new form comes to, but like the grand introduction to Hypnotic, it's kind of just for this episode. He's also the only real predator that gets like any type of extensive backstory next to the Panuncian and the Galvin predator, which I'm forgetting its name currently. Like they get a little bit of backstory too, but this episode feels like it was like really focused on it. And aside from just knowing how Hypnotic works now, there's no real payoff, so. But I still feel like those two things, malware's new form and Ben seeing malware in the present, it's just too important to skip. That like like pinches the whole plot together. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is the last like malware arc centered episode until the finale. Then we're just going to get a bunch of smaller standalone stories, right? Yeah, we are. Okay. This is pretty much it for the malware arc aside from the finale. So I would say five important sets everything up. You need this one and entertaining. I'm dropping back down to a three. Again, it did have a lot of really cool stuff, but nothing so impressive that it really had me hooked. And there was a couple of dry patches in the episode where it just kind of felt like we were eating up Time, specifically the said fights. That's still a great score. Let's move on to the final thoughts. So I got some interesting final thoughts to share with y'all. First of all, on the note of Julius, I saw on the wiki that since this episode's appearance doesn't count as a cameo, I thought that meant he had a speaking role. And in an attempt to make my schedule more efficient, I actually recorded this breakdown first instead of the quick review of Blue Kitchen Dreba Goes to Mr. Smoothies, which comes before this episode. And had I recorded these episodes in sequence, I would have realized that that is where Julius talks. Sorry, we're closed. Ben Tennyson didn't know it was you. I always try to record things in sequence specifically for reasons like this, but with this week's production, I experimented with switching things up and now I know. Always record episodes in sequence, no matter what. I was also asking around to see if anybody else knew where the keypad for the rust bucket came from, and while no one was able to put it together, it was still really cool seeing all of the different functions and displays that the rust bucket has. It kind of inspires me to want to make a video all about the rust bucket. There's a lot of cool things that this thing can do, and a lot of really neat button layouts. Also, thinking about it more, the plumbers reopening their old Mount Rushmore base is actually inconsistent all the way up to the end of Ultimate Alien, where it's implied that it's still the abandoned old plumber base when they're fighting off Dagengax. So while I do like the idea that we're seeing a transition between the old school and new school plumbers here in Omniverse, it's a lot more inconsistent with the previous UAF era than I would have liked, but you know, so is everything with Ben 10. For this week's poll, it's a bit of a weird one. Once again, I want to emphasize that I know there's no real in-universe reason for Ben's resetting character arcs, but if we were going to headcanon one out of these options, what would y'all agree with the most? Amnesia, Ben really does have memory problems. Stubbornness, Ben has morals but constantly needs self-assurance. Carelessness, Ben just doesn't really care about morals. Immaturity, he's too young for these things to stick. Or it really is just the Celestial Sapiens. Or if you don't agree with any of these reasons and don't want to vote, let me know in the community tab's comments when this video goes live. I hope you all have a fantastic end of your 2023. Happy holidays. Look out for the upcoming episodes of 5YL. And until next time, keep it fizzy.